Hey everyone, how are you doing today? A very warm welcome to this video series on multi-threading in Python. And in this particular video, we are going to talk about threading and mutual exclusion in Python threads. Now, there is a prerequisite to understand this video. I have created couple of videos before this in this particular series and I will highly recommend you to go ahead and look into those videos because this video is a continuation of those two videos. Now the first video is extremely important because it talks about so many things and if you know those things, it will be helpful to you even if you are using multi-threading in some other programming language. And the second video talks about, you know, how to create threads and how to create threads in object oriented way and how to pass parameters and so on and so forth. Those things are extremely important and I am going to use those things in this particular video. So let's go ahead and start to understand what is meaning of thread synchronization and mutual exclusion. So you know from my previous video that you need to import threading if you want to use threads in Python. And from threading, I will import the class thread. I will use this thread class, the built-in class to create Python threads. And I am also importing time. Time is not required for threading. I am importing time so that I can demonstrate few things to you. Okay. Now, before we go ahead and talk about thread synchronization or mutual exclusion, we must understand why we need these things, right? So let's talk about the need for it. You know, mutual exclusion means something is mutually exclusive. If it is with one person, other person can't use it. I'm giving a very simple example over here. You know, let's talk about a meeting room in an office. So at any point of time, only one person can occupy that meeting room and until and unless that person comes out of the meeting room, other person can't go in. Let's try to represent the same thing in terms of Python function and let's understand how threading behavior works. So in here, I have created two functions. The first function is first person for the first person. What this function does is that it says that it prints person one occupies meeting room. It waits for, you know, half a second and then it says that person one vacates the meeting room right exact same function for second person person two occupies the meeting room sleep for half a second and person two vacates the meeting room one okay now let me create two threads the first thread will have its thread function as first person the second thread will have its thread function as second person okay let's start both threads simultaneously and I am using join to wait for these two threads to complete. What do you think will the output look like? Just guess, you know, ideally the concept is that a meeting room can only be occupied by one person at any point of time. But if I go ahead and run this thread, you can see that person one occupies meeting room one. That's the first print. Then comes person two occupies meeting room one. That's the problem, right? You know, if person one has already occupied meeting room, person two cannot occupy that. So in terms of programming languages or, you know, in terms of your code, your program, whatever you are creating, there will be resources which will be shared across threads. The resources can be files, database, objects, data structures, anything you can think of. Now, the same problem will happen there also. The resource can only be used by one person at any point of time. For example, in databases, only one person can write at any point of time. We have same problem. But we don't know when the thread will execute and how it will execute. We cannot guarantee that it should execute in the order I want it to be. So that's the reason we have created this thing called thread synchronization and mutual exclusion. And this is true for all programming languages. This is not limited to Python. So let's see how we can use mutex or mutual exclusion. So in this video, we are going to just talk about simple locks. Okay. So from the threading, we can call the lock function to get a lock. Okay. So in here, I'm getting the lock by calling threading dot lock and I got the lock. So what happens that this lock is global as of now. Let's change the thread functionality so that, you know, as soon as the thread function executes, it acquires the lock. And as soon as the thread function goes away, it releases the lock. So you can see the code over here. 
as soon as first person enter lock got acquired and the person goes out lock got release same thing for second person function also the lock is acquired and lock is released now think of this lock as if you know if a person goes to the meeting room the person locks the meeting room door from inside okay and until and unless the person unlocks it from the outside and goes out other person can't come in so these locks serves the exactly same purpose so at any point of time if one resource is having the lock then other person cannot take it so i am creating these two functions let's go ahead and create the threads now in here what i am trying to do is that i am passing the lock as a thread argument you can see that in the function first person second person i am taking lock as an argument now right now this lock is a global lock i can use it directly but in all probability in your code you are not going to have something as global as we are seeing over here that's the reason i have created thread in this way so that you know that you can create a lock and pass it to the thread so i am going ahead and creating the thread and i am running both threads cool now you can see that everything is in order the person one occupies meeting room one good person one first vacates the meeting room one then only person two goes into the meeting room so we have solved a very big problem with simple locks in our multi threaded code now we can use global locks as you can see over here and you can pass lock as a function parameters now you have to take care of one thing with you know passing locks as a function argument make sure that the objects which are having these locks should remain in there till the time the threads which are using the lock remains there okay otherwise it is going to be you know some kind of undefined state so this is what you need to understand and i am not sure that why i have written this function twice okay okay now let's talk about locks with timeout now you must have heard about race conditions right you know you are waiting for a lock which is waiting for the lock which you have acquired so it's kind of deadlock and race conditions come into picture to avoid that whenever you are using lock you can give some condition like you know there is a timeout which means that um we are going to wait for the lock for this particular time or this amount of time otherwise you know i'll just release the lock and go ahead so in this case as a programmer you need to write more code remember you need to write more code and you need to be more careful okay before writing the code because this is the place where you know problems start creeping in so always remember this that the more flexibility you get the more permutation and combination can happen but this is a good uh, choice to make in some scenario where you can't afford your program to remain stuck for a very long time for whatever reason okay so in here uh, let's assume that i am using the same first person second person function but in the second person i am acquiring the lock with a timeout say 0.1 okay so i am saying lock dot acquire i am saying acquire the lock but parameter is timeout 0.1 which means that if i don't get this lock acquired within 100 millisecond 0.1 second i will print lock is not free so this is while true loop which means that i am going to go away and wait for lock again for 0.1 second and if it is not there i'll say lock is not free okay and once lock is available person 2 will occupy meeting room 1 and then lock release now let's create two threads and run the thread what do you think the output will look like you see when person 1 occupies meeting room 1 the person 1 occupies it for half a second in the meantime multiple times this uh, second person tries to check if the meeting room is free if the lock is free just like you know you go and try to open the door and to check whether the door is still locked or not so you can see that the function comes here the lock dot acquire doesn't blocks you know in earlier case the lock dot acquires blocks till it acquires the lock in this case it will be blocking only for 0.1 second and then it will when it acquires the lock it comes out 
of that particular true loop okay now there is one option of giving the timeout the second option is that i can say that you know blocking equal to false so i can call lock dot acquire without any function which means it is going to be block till the lock is acquired second option was we can uh, use lock dot acquire function with a timeout which means that wait for this particular amount of timeout to acquire the lock if not anyway just go below the lock dot acquire code it doesn't mean that lock is acquired it means that go below the lock dot acquire code so in this case i am saying blocking equal to false it means that try getting the lock if lock is not there don't wait don't a wait even for a second and just go down okay so in this case again if the blocking becomes true i'll break from the loop otherwise lock is not free and i'll manually sleep for once uh, 0 0.1 second again create the thread and let's let me run the thread you can see that you will see approximately same output like the lock is not free and then once the lock is acquired everything goes fine okay now very important thing where you are gonna use all these functions i cannot tell you under which circumstance or scenario you must choose one because it totally depends upon what are you trying to do and how you are trying to do what is your program logic and what is your program tolerance limit to you know some unintended situations okay so that's all for today's video thank you all thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care